Nationwide, uh, there's a bit of a dilemma or a challenge that the energy industry is facing. Nationwide, uh, over the next 10 years, utilities are going to re replace huge numbers of their workforce. I can speak specifically to Dominion that between now and 2024, a full one-third of our workforce is going to turn over. As you think about ways of encouraging students, you want to say, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to want a job, but everybody wants a job. But we all want jobs with meaning. You know, I see it as now is the right time for Virginia to drive innovation and the utilization of existing and new technologies uh, to modify, modernize and modify the grid to accept distributed energy resources like solar, fuel cells, and others, manage emissions responsibly and protect the environment, and to execute on a host of new projects while monitoring the latest regulations and policy changes. But more needs to be done to ensure a prepared and qualified workforce that is critical to our industry. Critical to our industry, but keep in mind that our industry underpins the entire economy of the Commonwealth. Snapchat, Google, Facebook, none of it works without electricity. Virginia needs to continue work to work together to create educational programs and awareness initiatives. As you're listening to panel discussions today, I challenge you to think about new ways to address the industry's workforce demand. Consider ways we can provide the very best tools and resources to inspire people to seek careers in this important energy industry. I am very, very optimistic about the future of nuclear energy and the prospects for the workforce. Um, let, me, let me give you some statistics and I'll, I'll, I'll go through my, why, why, I, why I'm that optimistic. 83 of the 99 reactor units uh, have been, uh, have their licenses renewed to operate for 60 years. So, what does that mean? Well, you're gonna have a workforce uh, needed for these nuclear plants out through 2054, just on the existing plants, should they remain running. In Virginia, that means uh, 20, uh, 2032 for Surrey and Unit 1, 2033 for Surrey Unit 2, and 2038, 2040 for the North Anna units. That's quite, a, quite an extended view of where, where, where you need workers. Each of these plants that runs requires four to 700 skilled, very skilled workers, degreed and non-degreed, technician and engineer levels and management levels. It really is, it's an exciting time to be part of the natural gas industry in the United States and in Virginia. We are at a really great location and a very central location, both for you know, transportation and for um, production. And so we, you know, we're able to be sort of a great, you know, when you talk about being the energy capital, we're in the spot to be able to be an energy capital. And that could be also looking at you know, something that might be a little bit non-traditional like natural gas vehicles. We're a very big uh, you know, transportation hub in this region. So when you're looking at natural gas, it's more than just the energy that we're gonna be creating with that, which I'll talk about in just a minute, but then also think about it has other opportunities as well. So um, from being natural gas vehicles, the feedstock for manufacturing, that type of thing. So we're very keen on improving education and. Uh, and it's not just the engineers. I mean, God knows we love an engineer. We got four or 5,000 of them just down the road. But uh, we're interested in people that want to build things, people that want to fabricate and work with their hands. And I am, I am not talking about uh, coming in and working for $17 an hour. I'm talking about real career jobs that, that you can raise families on and make a great living uh, and, and be a real contributor both to defense or to the Department of Energy. Uh, People probably don't know the, uh, the four new reactors that are being built down south. Uh, we actually build the containments for that right here in uh, Virginia, and we ship them down. So our, our NNI subsidiary, Newport News Industrial, we have three facilities here in the local area that you could drive to from here that build those panels and ship them down to build those reactors. Now, we're hoping Toshiba and Westinghouse get their financing right because they're also asking us, can we build some of those for India? They want to build six reactors there. They want to build three reactors at a place called Moorside in England. Uh, we've actually opened a new office in England to support that. And so some of that work would be done here, including the, the fabrication and working with that design. So uh, that's a big deal to us, nuclear fabrication. The problem is 
uh, nobody advertises about great jobs in, in nuclear power. You know, because uh, when we grew up, it's, it's science fiction movies, and you'll, you'll get a third eye, and Homer Simpson doesn't help. My role with, uh, with Dominion is as a manager of one of our technical uh, groups within the company. Uh, I have our protection and control uh, group. So for us, that means uh, a, a group of engineers that supports uh, almost an army of, uh, of field technicians that, uh, that keep the lights on uh, uh, in the Commonwealth uh, every day. You know, one of the things that really surprises me, uh, uh, even, as an, even as an insider in this space, is the broad spectrum of STEM careers that uh, our energy industry uh, actually touches. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised every day uh, by uh, the, the types of work that, that we actually get, get our hands on. Uh, it is not uncommon within, within my space at, uh, at Dominion to, in addition to having our daily conversations about protection and control, but also reaching out and touching areas like uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and how those might be used to inspect uh, overhead transmission infrastructure. Earlier this week, I was speaking with a, a collaborator that I work with at the uh, NASA Goddard Space Weather Center and discussing how space weather in, in, may impact, uh, may impact our, our energy uh, infrastructure. Uh, solar is a, is a growing area, what, both within Virginia and our, and our neighbors and uh, Dominion's merchant fleet, and that has some very, very interesting uh, opportunities in it as well. Uh, not to mention the day-to-day uh, opportunities we get to to model things in new ways. Look, we're looking at expanding our ability to model uh, in in 3D. Uh, so all sorts of things, all sorts of uh, interesting areas within the STEM space are touched by the in energy in industry, and it's something that that really is that really is surprising. There's there's something for everybody in the in, in energy industry. I think everyone up here would agree, and I think many of you would understand that we deal with physics. And in physics, nothing comes free. If you want something, uh, if you want some sort of uh, physical phenomena to, to behave in a certain way, you want the lights to come on, you need to actually program and design that. And our, so our, our industry is, is full of engineering, full of design, and the spectrum is so broad in terms of the various disciplines that, that it takes to control the physics that govern our industry, whether it be the, the uh, the, the transmission and delivery of natural gas or the generation transmission and delivery of, of energy. Uh, every every uh, element of, of that pipeline, if you will, is, is something that's engineered and that takes both engineers uh, and, and technicians to, uh, uh, to, to work on. Within my group alone, we have, we have two-year technical degrees, we have four-year engineers, and we have a number of PhDs in electrical engineering as well. That are, that are a part of the workforce. So a broad spectrum of, of domains, but also a broad um, spectrum of, of inlet points into our industry as well. Are there specific workforce skills or training that you're now becoming worried about that you perhaps are not seeing enough of that this audience should get a good understanding and perspective of as we encourage these, these dialogues? Making sure you can find those workers that can come in, be focused on the job, be safe, and you know, I hate to say it, pass a drug test and have a good, um, and have a good clear driver's license. There are a few uh, institutions in the room here today that, that uh, we work with uh, at Dominion to, to train the next generation of what we would call relay technicians. Uh, that, that domain is really a space of electronics technology that is uh, blended with, uh, with at least a, a vocabulary uh, in, within the energy space, some basic uh, power and energy uh, concepts pull, pulled into that. Of course, petroleum engineering, there really is a very limited resource of uh, schools that have any sort of petroleum and engineering programs or classes. Um, so that's another avenue they could look at. One of the things we're seeing a big need of, especially in the production side, but also in some of the pipeline side as well, because it deals with pipelines, is welders, certified welders that can work in the petroleum industry. Those are the ones that are meeting those API, American Petroleum Institute standards. Um, a lot of the schools that offer welding do not necessarily offer 
what we need in order to be able to weld a proper pipeline. You can't teach everybody to weld because it's a tactile and a, an educational kind of training. You have to know the why it's working and then you have to have the hand-eye coordination. We are struggling because uh, young women tend to be the best welders we get. They are, they are very focused and attentive. They're, they're also the very best fiber optic technicians we get. One of the challenges that I, that I kind of alluded to earlier is turning today's gamers into tomorrow's geniuses. You walk into the genius bar at the Apple store and you know, uh, it's, uh, you know it's, it's a great experience. You come out, you're happy, your phone works again. How do we take today's ga gamers, turn them into tomorrow's geniuses? Because there's a lot of skill sets there that I think, uh, that I think can benefit us. A lot of our contractor companies, at least in Southwest Virginia, do allow for internships so they can learn. And a lot of our companies provide a lot of that training as well because they expect they're probably not going to have that training. I heard a number of themes here which I think are so important. And first I just want to say, you know, I really want to commend the companies that are here today who have who've decided to come together and kind of find a collective voice around this need. Um, not every industry can do this. I can tell you, um, you guys know you are competitors for talent. And so I think we've got to get to a point in understanding the collective need of the industry and speaking to, um, as educators and in, as individuals who have an opportunity to influence and inform students to speak to the industry and hear from the industry as well. Um, lots of themes, whether it be nuclear, gas, oil, defense, and I think if I could have summarized the, um, the comments from the panelists at the beginning, it really was the business case for building um, a talent pipeline for the energy industry in Virginia. Um, and I think there's a handful of kind of functional areas that I heard, um, engineering, um, I heard big data analytics and the ability to take massive amounts of data and make it say something. Um, and then it's certainly in the skilled trades area and the, at the technician level. I mean, if I were to say the three that I heard, those were the three. When I come to work every day, I feel like a, a kid on Christmas morning coming downstairs and seeing all the presents under the tree. It's, I absolutely love the opportunity I have uh, every day. And